Greetings! Today I will be making a power supply, a bench power supply using those two modules that I got some time ago. Those are the DP30 V5A-L modules um, and I will be making this into a standalone case with a, with a transformer. In the process I will be modifying those um, to suit for my purpose because there is right now uh, they're not exactly the way I want them to be um, and we'll be uh, fixing some of the heat dissipation issues on those. Everything in the power supply I'm making will be based uh, around those two modules and the rest of it I'm going to basically take all the guts that I need from my previous power supply that I built um, and I killed it not long ago hence I got those modules to rebuild the whole thing so let me show you the other power supply and here is the old thing and most of the stuff in here um, is actually recycled out of something um, the case itself was a skybox um, that I've adapted to my purpose I've got a nice IC connector on the back that I pulled out that out of something, two fans, um, two heat sinks, those are CPU heat sinks that I just made a bracket and attached the main power transistor onto it. I will be salvaging a lot of parts from here, so um, I will be keeping the connector, the, the fans, um, but I'll have to do something to make them a little bit more quiet. Um, and I will be keeping parts from here, those are the uh, relays that switch on the input and output, those are just um, hacked on onto a little proto board and it's just a simple transistor switch uh, I'm debating whether to keep those as they are or whether to redo it properly on a normal PCB um, I'll be keeping the filter caps, the dials from the outputs, the terminals I'm not sure whether to make a new PCB or just to cr cut it out actually directly out of this board and use it as it is um, I'll yet, uh, that's yet to be decided later on um, and of course my uh, big transformer over here this one I actually purchased is a 160 VA transformer uh, two times uh, 2 times 25 volts AC output with 3.2 amp okay and here are most of the parts um, and what I was thinking is whether I could reuse some of it so those I'll definitely I'll, I think I'll keep them as they are they're a little bit uh, ugly but they work and there's no point redoing this because it, it's got everything there second one is this and that's my uh, previous uh, power supply module that uh, I bought I got it as a kit and soldered it up and yes it works um, but yeah first of all linear power supply so big and all the energy is getting wasted as heat uh, which causes it to heat up quite a bit and yeah I managed to blow this one and it, it, the current limiting didn't work as intended hence it it blew up anyways but as you can see over here this section of the PCB is you I can treat it as self-contained basically bridge rectifier with a smoothing cap um, and um, that's a 7824 voltage reg on the output that's just to power the fans um, and all of it is basically this part of PCB so including with the connector block over here I can cut it out and use it as a module um, if I just separate it from the rest of the rest of the PCB so I think I'm going to do just that like this and yeah that saves me from making another PCB in here um, I can reuse that it's quite okay there's a few extra traces but I can completely ignore them and quite a bit of some time later I think I've got all the parts so we're going to assemble it right now and put it all together now it took me a while because uh, yeah I've got only some evenings and Making a project and filming a project or filming the making of a project is completely two different things. So yeah, it took uh, quite a bit of time to get this up. This is going to basically look like assembly of a kit. Um, so I've got all the parts ready, slowly put them together, whatnot, and you will be able to see the whole construction. So um, yeah, without further ado, let's move on to the first bit. Here are the DP30V5A-L uh, modules that I've modified and you can see um, before the LEDs were over here, the LED displays and that was very inconvenient because I can't mount it in a panel and what I've done is I've, I took 
lots of different pieces of strip wood and just cut them to size, glue them together. It was a the whole thing is a bit of improvised to be honest. I didn't uh, design this uh, prior to, to doing it, I just basically cut piece by piece and I was trying to make sure that you know both of them are the same. Um, and I've desoldered the LED panels and with lots and lots of wires uh, going on both sides um, I've uh, connected them back where they were supposed to be. Um, I've got buttons over here also in the panel those are salvaged uh, tactile buttons from skyboxes um, those are uh, connected straight to the wires I kept the wires in uh, the old switches in place I've just connected them back in in parallel um, and the LEDs that were on here so the input and constant current constant voltage I have actually desoldered those and connected the wires over to the LEDs in the front panel now I had to do the solder those uh, because if I connected another LED in parallel it wasn't bright enough those are very poor LEDs but yeah yeah they will do um, but it, they were just too dim if there was another newer more newer quality uh, LED uh, in parallel with it so that's that and I've got two of those modules of what I've also done with those modules I've uh, removed the heatsink and then I applied some solder paste properly tightened it up and resoldered the heatsink uh, which seemed to have done the trick in terms of uh, you know having a better alignment with the power transistor and the diode um, in order to, to improve the heat dissipation a little bit and that's about it for those so here is my chassis chassis that I made um, and again it's all wood because wood is extremely easy and rewarding to work with uh, you can you know very quickly prototype it's quicker than 3d printing actually um, so yeah with um, a little bit of uh, you know design and precaution or where to put what and what not uh, I was able to make a chassis like this let's get a ruler and measure it out for you so you get the idea of the size it is 24 centimeters long 14 centimeters tall and 12 and a half centimeters wide now this, this ruler is very worn out, but uh, I really like it, it's my stainless steel ruler. Um, and this is what it is, and I, I did some, you know, features in here that I wanted that will help me to put everything together. Um, now those modules will fit in here, we'll get to that in a moment, uh, but let's start building it and I'll as we are building, we are building it, I'll, I'll show you, uh, I'll tell you about all the little bits at the why I done them and how I done them and what for. Okay, let's begin by mounting the toroidal transformer over here. Um, and I've pre-drilled a hole right there in the middle. And the transformer has got a few parts to it. So we've got uh, one rubber thing um, and the screw that goes through it. So maybe let's let's put that through. You have to first put the transformer on like this. I've got all the old wiring attached to this, but uh, never mind. I will adjust that later on as we need. Um, and the transformer's got a second rubber protector. This is just to, in case it vibrates, to not to damage all the windings and, and whatnot. And a metal plate like this that's all screwed in um, and yeah the screw sticks out at the bottom but that's not a problem because there will be feet underneath um, or standoffs but now we've got um, the switch and it's a nice mains rated um, clanking double pole double throw switch or double pole single throw um, so yeah it's it's, it's, it's a good switch, but um, yeah, the cable that I've got here, because before there was a different arrangement, is much too long, so I won't need an extension of this at all, um, because this is the hole that I've uh, accounted in for the switch. Um, so that's definitely got to be shortened out, so let's fix that. Like here, and I'm using my uh, little 
soldering iron uh, that I've modified for USB power and that's doing quite the trick actually. And I can secure the uh, heat shrink on the switch back again it's in its own place with a heavy duty cable tie like so cut off the end flush and now the switch can go into its designated spot in the case the next thing is we need to connect this to mains and this hole here is designated for an IEC, IEC connector and I've done it this way because from previous experience I've noticed that if you put an IEC connector at the back of your product, gizmo, gadget, whatever you're doing the that it tends to stick out quite a bit when you plug in a power cord. Um, so what, what I've done is I've decided to recess the IEC connector quite a bit into the case. So it will basically, it will sit nicely flush at the back. If the IEC connector is at the, just at the back uh, side and you plug a cord into it, the cord's got a little bit of not flexible thing and you're never able to put the, your device all the way back because of a wall back shelf or whatever it is. But when you recess it, um, it's, yeah, you can push it all the way back and it doesn't, doesn't stress the cable. And here is mine, it's already pre-wired and heat shrinked uh, and whatnot uh, because I took it out of the old power supply. So that should just slide in like so. and I should be able to screw it in with a couple of screws. Okay, that sits nicely in place. Now, the first thing after the IEC connector, I want to be a fuse. So I'm going to use this um, connector here, the block connector, which has got a built-in fuse holder. Um, really nice mains rated, um, just a regular glass fuse, not a biggie, but yeah, I want this to be there um, and I'm going to mount this here and what will I will do, I will take the IEC connector to here. This will also become, this center one, this will also become my um, mains earth reference point for everything else in the, in the circuit. So um, yes, uh, this has to go in here like so, so I'll need to shorten those leads a little bit and that should stay connected to this. So let's do this. And that's in place, I just need to uh, turn the wires over here for the, the, one the ones that go to the switch. And I've had to cut them a little bit short because I've damaged the insulation on the, uh, on the cable. So that's fine, uh, that's just about the length I need anyways. So, Let's see, yeah, and um, yeah, some people say that it's not uh, good to solder up your, or to thin your uh, connections when you put them, put them in the block terminal and because yeah, it, with time it can make bad contact and whatnot. Um, maybe, um, but I've never had a problem with it. Uh, what I did have a problem with it was one stray wire, just not very, just a single strand um, peeling off from the rest of the bunch and that causing a short in the circuit. Uh, but uh, yeah, when I tin them, uh, at least I'm, I'm certain that none of that is going to happen. Uh, but. Okay, I guess it's everyone's own flavor on how that, uh, what to do, what not to do. And here it is, all connected and wired up. The only thing, important thing to remember of, this is not a non-contactive case, it's made out of wood. Uh, but there are a few, well there's actually one place where a metal 
connected to mains is exposed to the outside and that's the switch because it's got a metal body so and the screws itself so important thing is um, to make sure this is earthed so I've put a, a cable with a ring uh, at the end and I'm going to put it straight through to the terminal block where I've connected the earth so this way anything mains connected mains uh, post that can get possibly mains uh, mains on it is earthed at all times and that's an important thing to do okay and this would seem like a good moment to test to make sure the transformer is working switch is working and we've connected everything correctly so after a quick visual check um, I know all the cables are color coded and so blue blue brown brown and that goes into transformer and here they're color coded as well that's all insulated so um, I've plugged the IC cable into the thing so let's power it up and no explosions yet uh, meter on AC volts and what we should be getting is mains over here yeah we've got 243 volts excellent and we should have uh, 25 volts AC on the output 29 okay or this, this is not a true RMS meter so yeah that's about right yeah 29 and 29 perfect I can also test the earth connection so that will test the cable and whatnot so we'll just beep it out so this should be our earth and that should beep with yeah there we go I'm I'm just touching to the uh, anti-static mat grounding point and that clearly beeps out and here are the rectifier modules that I've cut out from the old power supply board I'm just going to reuse them as they are um, it's basically a, a fat uh, bridge rectifier made out of four diodes, a smoothing cap. Um, I've got uh, 7824 uh, linear regulator. Um, that's just going to. I'm going to use this to power up a couple of uh, small components on uh, on here that I'm going to add. Um, uh, just like in the previous one and that's about it and I've got a block terminal connector so what I have to do is mount them in here and uh, originally what I thought I'm going I'm going I was going to mount them here but a bit of an afterthought it's a little bit too close to the mains um, just for good measure I'm, I've added those little brackets here and this will slot in like so um, and then I'm just going to use I don't know hot glue or something uh, when I'm done to to keep it exactly in place and um, yeah that's uh, let's get this connected right let's do another test so let's power it back up we should be expecting roughly about 37 volts so let's measure this up 39 got it wrong way around but that doesn't matter okay and the other one if I can reach no I can't I need to turn it around and on the other side 39 as well so so far everything is working yeah let's check voltage reg as well yeah 24 and the other one forgot about that as well so everything's working so far